Hello, and welcome to the SharePoint Framework, a JavaScript special interest group bi-weekly sync. It is December 3rd, 2020. Welcome to the last month of 2020. Can't wait to see what it holds for us. I am Patrick Rogers, your host for this call. We've got a great agenda as always for today. We'll get updates on the SharePoint Framework, updates on the patterns and practices program offerings, new community samples listing, picture time with Together Mode, and then demos with Chong Wu, uh, building a secure SharePoint Framework web part, and Kunj Sangani uh, and Siddharth Vaghasia, uh, doing SPFX web part to manage application customizer products, the sites. Both of those are going to be really exciting demos. I can't wait to see those as we get towards the end of the call. But first, opportunities to participate in the PNP program. Uh, obviously, uh, demos. We love demos. We love everybody who comes and does demos on the call. So encourage any of you, anyone and everyone to, to just reach out if you have a demo you'd like to do. Uh, that can be anything SPFX related uh, or at PNP related. So any of our program offerings or a combination of any of those things, love to see that. Uh, or anything really client side development related, teams related is great as well. Uh, love to see those things on the call. Uh, you can also contribute on GitHub by reporting issues, submitting pull requests or helping with any issues or questions that are out there that you might uh, happen to know the answer to. As well, we always encourage your feedback. So how are these calls? How is our documentation? Where else can we help? And of course, positive feedback is okay too, because if you really like something we're doing, we can maybe do a little bit more of it. With that, we will go to our giant Slido links. And uh, the first link there is for all our developer videos. So those are uh, sort of scenario focused videos for developers about different aspects of SharePoint or Microsoft 365 development. Uh, from things like starting your first web part to more advanced authentication scenarios and so forth. Great source of developer information there. Our more general videos, community videos, so the recordings of all of these calls are uh, there. So that's m 365 pmp videos We have a bunch of open source repositories, all of which uh, encourage you to participate. So we've got github.com slash SharePoint slash PNP slash Office Dev and slash Microsoft Graph. Uh, all of those are open to your contributions, open to your reporting issues, open to your participation, and uh, certainly invite you to do so in any and all of those where you have interest. Likewise, we have a bunch of different sample galleries. So a lot of the uh, demos we see on these calls come from our sample galleries and encourage you if you have cool samples uh, that you can put there. So SPFX web parts, SPFX extensions, list formatting, and team samples. And I always say that's the first place I go when I have uh, something I'm researching or something I need to build, I always go check out the samples first to get some great ideas. Great place uh, for you as well to get some great ideas. And then finally, the really the main link to remember, ak.ms slash m365pnp will get you uh, to our Patterns and Practices landing page, which contains links and descriptions of all of the content I just described. As well, you can find the SharePoint framework documentation at aka.ms slash spfx. We do also have a developing apps for Microsoft Teams uh, two-hour live stream by developers for developers. It's going to be December 16th, 2020, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. PST. Understanding that's a tough time for some folks. The sessions, of course, will be recorded, will be available after uh, afterwards for everybody uh, who can't maybe attend live. And did I mention there are prizes? So with that, we'll move over to sharing is caring. David, take it away. Patrick, thank you. Uh, for those that are new on the call, it's important and good to know that the Patterns and Practices community is an inclusive open source community. What that means is that all of our tools are available for you to use for free and contribute back to, but we understand that there are sometimes some hurdles, uh, some education that needs to be provided in those scenarios to utilize those tools like GitHub, like NVM, like Node, uh, and so the Sharing is Caring initiative is here to provide some hands-on guidance on how you can take advantage of all those things. We run these sessions multiple times throughout the month for you to take advantage of, uh, completely free to join. We have sessions in December scheduled for the first-time contributor and community docs, so those are fantastic opportunities for those that are not developers, but still want to feel uh, like they have stuff to contribute, which you do. So we invite you to please join those calls with Hugo and I. PNP SPFX samples using NVM so you can learn how to take better advantage of all the samples that we have available. And of course, we're starting up the developer workstation session, which provides uh, a lot of guidance on some of those essentials that'll make it valuable for you to start being successful with SPFX and the PNP tools. Coming soon is some AMAs. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And of course, SPFX upgrades 
using the CLI for Microsoft 365. So please join aka.ms, sharing is caring, uh, completely open, safe space opportunities to ask questions, get more involved. You're working with others in the community. And so it's a lot of fun. Hugo and I try to make sure that everybody's getting involved and, and enjoying themselves and we're open to assist. So please feel free to join. And we, uh, we look forward to seeing you at a future session. Patrick, back to you. Thanks, David. Yeah, really great session, seeing really great feedback uh, from folks that have attended those. So if you're interested in getting involved, please do check those out. It's a great way to get started. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is encouraged uh, to attend those if you would like. And now SharePoint Framework updates from VESA. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, nothing too traumatic here, just a, a updated of the charts. I have to say that on this Monday and Tuesday, um, the numbers are pretty identical. We did a, again, all time, worldwide usage records on a daily basis uh, on the SPSX, SPFX third party usage. Um, so, and you can pretty nicely see that curve is, is pretty much out of this world. Uh, so it's nice to see the adaption of SPFX in SharePoint and also in Teams growing quite significantly. So as you know, we are pushing more and more uh, SharePoint framework also as a development platform for Microsoft Teams. Now let's go to the following slide. Uh, no real updates on the roadmap as such. Uh, we were originally planning to release 1.12 this year, calendar year, but unfortunately now we're starting to hit uh, the holiday season and we basically missed it. So uh, 1.12 is then uh, planned to get out uh, in January and that will have then additional insights on the base structure. So you can actually understand what is your why uh, of the section, why of the section in a page, if a web part and all of that stuff and additional insights otherwise. Other than that, uh, not a massive amount of updates. We are working on the, on the authentication update, so MSAL2, uh, for making everything happen more seamlessly. And then the team's improvements is a big, big, big focus area. So you'll see definitely cool announcements coming up on the Ignite in March and built in May next uh, half of the calendar year. But that's it from my side. Go ahead, throwing it back to you, Patrick. Thank you, Vesa. Now we'll move on to the PMPJS client side library updates with Julie. So we have the 2.0.13 release scheduled for December 11th. Um, that's coming up with just some bug fixes and documentation updates. The big change is we've added, uh, or rather Patrick added, the MSAL auth for local dev and test. So if you want to learn more about that, go to our PMPJS repository and check out the notes that he put in PR number 1454. So basically, this is already merged in, but when we release, you'll be able to use MSAL auth to do your local testing, as well as our GitHub actions are getting updated so that we'll be using MSAL auth for that as well. So that's a, a big update for us, and we're pretty excited about it. Also, keep in mind the 2.1.0 beta is still out, which allows isolated run times, which most probably useful in uh, Node.js server side scenarios where you want to be able to connect to two different tenants at the same time. This would uh, allow you to do that, as well as for uh, certain geos, if you uh, have cross geo scenarios in SharePoint online, that helps you with that. So there's a lot of uh, different ways that can help you. So please help us by testing it out, see if it works for you and provide any feedback so we can uh, get that out of beta sooner rather than later. And then finally, as always, please follow us on Twitter with M365PMPJS. All of our updates will go out using that Twitter account. So follow that so you're up to date on everything that's going on. And I think that's all I have. So back to you, Patrick. Thank you, Julie, for that update. And with that, we'll move over to the CLI. Is anybody for the CLI on? No. Uh, so CLI for Microsoft 365 released a new version 3.3 with adding, getting, removing to-dos, generating file sharing information reports, and more. So you can check all of that. You can always install the latest version from NPM, npm install-g at pmp slash CLI, Microsoft 365 at latest. We'll always get you the latest update there. And a reminder, it is now available natively in the Azure Cloud Shell. So certainly encourage you uh, to check that out. Another great tool in the toolbox of stuff to help you in your development journey. Next up is the reusable controls. New updates for the React controls 2.2.0. So improved rich text control, improved file picker, improved taxonomy picker, 
uh, optimizing the file picker and localization fixes. And then the property controls 2.2.0 has a new Teams picker property pane control and additional localization fixes there as well. So these are great ways to get started building uh, solutions using ready-made components that give you a great out-of-the-box look and integrate nicely into SharePoint, whether in the presentation side with the React controls or the property pane editing side with the React property controls. Encourage you to check those out as well as great tools in the toolbox for your development journey as well. Two links down there, sharepoint.github.io, sp-dev-fx-property-controls, and sp-dev-fx-controls-react to get you all the latest information on both of those packages. Moving on to modern search, uh, aka.ms slash pnp dash modern search will get you all the latest information about modern search. This is the version 3.16.0 is available. That's a November 2020 release. Uh, four contributors added some language uh, features and fixes. All of the real work is now focused on the V4 with a preview available. You can see the link there to get uh, the latest release of V4. So that's going to be the graph search API as well as the SharePoint search API. Uh, re-architected the whole thing. Uh, feel free to download and test that. There is no direct upgrade from V3, and the docs now all point to V4 by default. So that's the aka.ms slash pnp dash. So check that out. Great way to build a modern, flexible search portal uh, with, again, ready-made components. You just have to drop in and configure to do what you need to do. And with that, we'll go to the PNP SPFX samples with Hugo. Thank you, Patrick. So the SPFX sample repositories are two repositories that you can use to learn more about how to build SPFX extensions and SPFX web parts. If you haven't tried them yet, go ahead and try them. I'll just wait. I guess uh, I guess I'll continue. So there's the updates that you see here are updates that have happened over the last two weeks. So as you can see, it's a pretty active. Uh, group of repositories. Uh, contributors are constantly adding samples or updating samples. So this is the list here. We have a list item menu from Joao Mendez. Nandeep Nachan has updated the display hierarchy. We have a RSS reader update from Abderrahman who updated it to SPFX 111. And we have a new web part from Jerry Yesser, uh, which shows you soccer highlights. I'm sure it could be used for other sports, but uh, this one is specifically for soccer. We also have a new web part sample from Joao Mendez, uh, which is the Microsoft Graph Toolkits event, which shows you how to use the Microsoft Graph Toolkit and Fluent UI custom controls. And finally, we have quite a few updates actually to the calendar web part by Abderrahman Mujahid. Again, if you haven't had a chance to take a look, go take a look, and we always welcome contributions. Thank you, everyone, for co who contributed, and back to you, Patrick. Thank you, Hugo. Fantastic to see all these great samples uh, get added week after week. A testament to all of the great work everybody out there in the community is doing. So thank you to all of you that have submitted uh, samples and taken the time to do that. It really means a lot to help build things up and improve everybody's experience. And with that, it is now picture time. So if you are interested, please do turn on your camera and we'll be in together mode. And let me put the picture on the screen with some sharing. And I will, let's wait a few more seconds. I will do a quick recording of everything as a video as well. We're using the one of the new scenes as well. Um, trying to get a new scene every single week available. Let's spend a few more, few, uh, few more, few more seconds, few more seconds. I think we're hitting the maximum and let me hit the recording. And then we can actually, everybody can wave three, two, one. So we'll get a few nice GIF animation for everybody. Thanks everybody. It's good to see again the faces. This is, this is much better than not seeing faces. So we're not in a conference, but this is still really cool. So thank you everybody for that one. A really big question. We don't want to take more time, <laughs> but thank you, thank you. I'm going to stop the recording and let's get back on the demos. Let's get back on the demos. So our first demo is going to be Chong Wu, uh, building secure SharePoint framework web parts. Are you ready to go? Yeah, yes. Let me share. Hi, everyone. I'm Chong from Buffing Work team. And uh, today I'm going to show two new demos for how to integrate bot to SharePoint. 
Uh, these samples are built by Microsoft Buffing Work Team and uh, Stephen, who is an MVP. And uh, before I start, as you are uh, all very familiar with SharePoint related technology, I'd like to introduce a little bit about uh, Buffing Work. The Buffing Work is a Microsoft uh, framework for building enterprise grade conversational AI experience. Uh, you can check this website for more information. And you can easily build a bot with the bot framework tool. If you want to add a bot like a QA bot to your SharePoint site, you can reference the sample edit here, um, this two, and uh, one for better security consideration and the one for uh, single sign on. And uh, the reason why we are doing this, the first consideration is when Microsoft and the bot in SharePoint sites are growing more and more popular. Uh, the SharePoint and Buffing Work are both Microsoft production. We will make sure they are easy to work together and well to use. Currently, we have some community samples about how to integrate bot to SharePoint by Stefan and some other people, but they have some pain points like a lack of security consideration and no sample for single sign-on. Mm. So based on this situation, we will provide uh, one simple sample uh, with basic security consideration and one complex sample with single sign-on feature to improve the user experience on authentication. We will target on two popular components in SharePoint, the web chart and the, the extension. Let me demo the first sample with security consideration. This site is a uh, Contoso SharePoint site because uh, we, we will need admin uh, privilege uh, for the single sign-on. So uh, I create a test account uh, from Contoso. Uh, you can also do this if you want to test with admin privilege. Um, and uh, uh, here, if I edit this page and uh, uh, you can find uh, this one, uh, this is a new web uh, part with uh, security and uh, you can put the bot and the point uh, here. Saved. Okay. Uh, okay, you can see the bot uh, has been connected. So let me talk uh, on something uh, behind that sample. The first stuff we add for integrate uh, the bot to SharePoint site, uh, we we need to use WebChat, which is a highly customizable web-based client for bot. To use WebChat, uh, uh, we need to provide a secret to connect to direct line channel. Uh, you can find that settings here in your uh, bot registration uh, in Azure. Uh, it shows in channels here, and you can see the secret keys. Uh, it is a uh, admin keys, which means you can use this key to connect to any conversation you like. And uh, if you want to make uh, your bot work easily, uh, you can add uh, the uh, the direct line secret in your client uh, and make it work quickly, uh, but it's, it is not secured. So actually, uh, we should put the uh, secret to uh, another service like bot service and uh, use user ID to retrieve a user token uh, from direct line and use that token uh, to continue the conversation, which will be uh, more secure. And uh, the second part is the uh, temper-proofed user. We need to enable uh, this feature to ensure the all sports uh, should be in the same box as a bot. For example, an attacker start a conversation with a bot to get a, a sign-in link. The attacker send the sign-in link to someone else and tell him or her to click the link. When the person does, he or she uh, will be asked to sign in to the conversation, but the conversation is actually the attacker's conversation. 
To prevent this, we will need to enable this feature. This is uh, this can be very simple uh, to just enable this option in our channel setting. So do remember to set it up when you set your bot in SharePoint. And uh, let's go through some highlighted code for this uh, feature. The, for example, we go to the uh, web part sample. And first, we will go to the web part uh, code. And uh, here, uh, you can see this is a web chat component, which is a React uh, component. Um, and uh, here you can see, you can get the user login uh, name and uh, send it to the bot to get a, a direct line token. Uh, this should be uh, encrypted by MD5 or some other uh, encrypt algorithm, uh, because if the uh, user name is guessable, it is easy for attackers to get other users uh, direct line token uh, by uh, the guest name and uh, the re uh, request to bot service. So do uh, please do remember to encrypt that. And uh, for the uh, token retrieve, you can see it uh, sent to the uh, bot uh, to retrieve your token. Uh, and uh, you can check the code here. Here is a bot code. And uh, here is the uh, bot service. And uh, it uh, used the uh, stored direct line secret and the user ID to retrieve a user token from a direct line and uh, get it back to the web, web part. And uh, here it is. And uh, with the token, we will now set up the direct line component and continue the conversation with the bot uh, now. Uh, let's move to another demo, which is a single sign-on demo. As we are already logged into SharePoint site, it is uh, hard to uh, log in again in our bot. Uh, for example, if we uh, try to log in with a, a simple bot, uh, and uh, it will prompt you again with the authentication uh, OAuth card, which is uh, not that friendly. So we will try our new SSO web part uh, here and uh, also do the similar thing. Copy the bot endpoint and uh, okay and uh, refresh. Yeah. Uh, now the bot is uh, connected. And uh, if you try to log in uh, again, and, and uh, you will find uh, a toast is prompted up. Uh, if you click yes, and it will use your uh, SharePoint uh, uh, user account to log into bot. So you can see it's uh, much easier for user. And uh, uh, if user uh, don't like uh, this way, he can also fall back to uh, the traditional way, for example. And uh, press no, and uh, here is the traditional way. You can see uh, this one uh, takes uh, more time and uh, more complex for user to use. Now it can work too. Uh, and uh, this is a web part sample and uh, you can see similar stuff in extension. Uh, so you can add this uh, small uh, bot icons to uh, replace this one. It's, uh, it's also convenience too. And uh, the main concepts of single sign-on is uh, show as below. Uh, when user log in to parent website and uh, it's uh, get an OAuth uh, trigger activity, it will uh, send to bot and the bot will return an OAuth card. 
but instead of show the auth card, the web chat will will get the this message and ask the parent website for an exchangeable token. And uh, you, when it gets the token, it will send the token to the bot, and uh, the bot will exchange the token to Azure Bot Service. And if it is successful, the bots will be authenticated, and uh, no cards will be shown anymore. And if it's failed, the uh, card will be prompt again. Uh, and uh, uh, the API we use to get the exchangeable token is the AD token provider. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is the sample structure. Uh, it's used to toast here for the single sign-on and the traditional. Uh, and uh, yeah, after it's got, got a token, it's just uh, give it to direct line and uh, it can communicate with the bot. And uh, uh, you can check the sample readme uh, for the whole settings, you can see it's very long list. Uh, it's kind of complex, um, but the key part is uh, we need to expose an API in uh, our AD uh, here um, and add a customer scope and also add a authorized client application, which is our SharePoint principle here. And after we do that, we will put our app name and scope name here and uh, approve the uh, API access in our admin center. After we've done this, we will get the token from SharePoint site. And uh, let's also check uh, the code for some highlighted part. And uh, here, yes, this is a single sign-on uh, sample. And the uh, and uh, we also start from this one. Uh, and uh, you see, we uh, we also use the web chart with React component. And uh, we add additional two parts, which is host middleware and a store. Uh, a store, uh, uh, this, this too is the web chart API uh, to help us support this scenario. Uh, the store is used to get the OS the activity uh, and uh, try to get uh, the exchangeable token from SharePoint side. And when it gets the OAuth uh, activity, it will change it to a, a notification named uh, sign-in. And uh, when the sign-in uh, notification has been captured by the Toast middleware, it will go to the bot sign Toast. Uh, we can check it here. Mm. And uh, when you click the Agree, uh, button, it will um, get token from AD provider. And with that token, we will generate a new activity uh, to bot with this exchangeable token. And then we will wait for the bot's response uh, to tell us whether it is success or fail. And uh, if it's failed, it will go to the, it will fall back to traditional bot authentication, which we can check it here, and it will perform the card action to show the card again. And here is the, basically the highlighted part of the code. And the, the additional information uh, you may be interested in is uh, if you need a admin account and you don't have one, you can have a test account here. And uh, the first time user try single sign-on, uh, user should be presented with an OS card to log in. This is because the user have not yet give the consent to the bus AAD app. You can use uh, the main consent uh, to prevent that um, if you don't like that. And also there is a SDK bug, which is JS only, that the first time OS card uh, cannot show correctly. And if you meet this problem, you can try the traditional login first. This only have to be uh, to done it once. So uh, yeah, we may uh, need some time to wait for it to get fixed. That's all my demo. Uh, do you have any questions or yeah? Queen uh, Vesa here. Uh, any chance okay. we can go back on the PowerPoint? Uh, on the sorry, on the on the SharePoint site. Uh, there was a good okay. question. 
Alexei related on the hovering bot on the left side, because I know that you implemented that as well. The web part is a one thing, but then yeah. there's that this one. Yes. Okay. Can you can you explain what it is and how is it working? Because I, I think that's really cool as well, because in the same way as we can implement web parts, we can do it in here as well. Uh, yes, this is a SharePoint extension. Yeah, uh, you can you can see uh, it's a, in another repo, which is a extension repo. Sorry for putting you on a spot, but yep, yeah, you can easily find it. Yeah. Uh, and if you are interested, you can find uh, it here. Uh, this one, uh, the SSO one, uh, and uh, for the code, uh, it's um, kind of similar. Uh, the highlight part is uh, kind of similar, and uh, it, it's leverage the extension uh, framework to help build the little bot icon. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, for uh, the code is basically like this. So is there uh, any specific uh, functions to about yeah, this? I I think it was more a question. Can you, uh, can you, sorry, Quinn, um, there's the uh -huh. code framework chat pop up application customizer. So one folder up, um, one folder up from, and the DS, uh, one folder still up. Uh -huh. We have the two files. We have the JSON file and then the TypeScript file. The uh, bot framework chat pop up application customizer, five files down or six files down. Da, 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 da. We are still more down, more down, 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 still more down, still more that one more, that one. So this just to kind of a pinpoint, sorry, sorry, sorry for guiding you in here. Just uh -huh. to kind of a pinpoint in here that this is a application customizer for SharePoint framework. And then mm -hmm. it's using, I think it's using absolute positioning that it's actually putting the, the, the oh, yeah. uh, image hovering on the page. And then when you click a hover, you basically Render the React component. Is that correct? Mm, yeah. All good. So, so it's just clarifying how it's implemented uh, because there's SharePoint developers on on the chat and window. Can we go one more time on the browser and just show how it's actually presented in a browser? Because I think that's that's really cool. Obviously, the web part is is really cool. Technically, the bot implementation is exactly the same in both sites uh -huh. uh, but taking advantage of the application customizer we can then position a bot for example in this way on the lower left corner or yeah let's say lower right corner and then we are going to click it to see it yeah. yeah i like this way better than this way yeah <laughs> yes in Indeed. And and maybe who knows, uh, because I'm from a SharePoint engineering, who knows, maybe at some point we'll have a native way of exposing bots in the SharePoint site. But right now that's not in the short term uh, pipeline or roadmap. Yeah. And so this would be a way of getting then the, the corporate bots exposed in a portal. So really cool implementation. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. But so that was a great demo. Uh, thank you. Really excited to see the bot stuff. The bot stuff continues to grow and expand, and uh, some of the use cases people find for that are really, really interesting, uh, really fascinating stuff. So, uh, great area. And if you're not looking at bots uh, as part of your solutions, uh, as appropriate, uh, they could be a great part of your solutions. Uh, Patrick, who do we have next on the on the line? Uh, we have uh, Kunj and uh, Siddharth uh, to do their SPFX web part to manage application customizer properties. So uh, Kunj or Siddharth, are you guys online and ready to go? Yes, thank you, Patrick. Yeah, let me share my screen yeah, quickly. So I would like to thank uh, PNP community and PNP team members to give me this opportunity to present my web part. So today we'll be discussing uh, one of the web part which we have uh, recently developed, uh, which would help us manage our application customizer. So it was uh, uh, developed by me and uh, uh, Siddharth as well. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kunj uh, and I'm working as a M365 developer. 
and these are my social handlers uh, i even do like to share my knowledge so you can check out some of my blogs and yes uh, i have co developed it with siddharth so you can connect with him as well so regarding any of the issues or any different issues as well you can connect with us this is the link uh, where you can check uh, our uh, application customizer it is named as react hyphen edit application customizer and uh, what was the motivation or what was the driving factor uh, which uh, made me or uh, siddharth develop this web part was once we were dis- once i was discussing with siddharth that uh, i had an application customizer and i had prop- properties in it but to change those properties uh, we either need to use pnp powershell or office 365 cli so there was no ui based approach uh, which would help us uh, update it real quickly uh, we would either need to write few lines of powershell code or uh, we need to have office 365 uh, few lines of codes but to overcome that uh, we developed a ui based approach where a user can just uh, select for which site collection they want to update their application customizer and they can uh, quickly update the properties there itself so what we are offering currently so this web part would be more of handy to those who are uh, admins in the sharepoint uh, end like those who want to update uh, their application customizers and uh, we are offering two different types of layout uh, so one is accordion based and one is list based i'll show you I'll show it to you in the demo and let's jump to the demo okay so yes so this is the web part so as you can see this is accordion based uh, uh, approach here what you can do is we have all the site collection present in my tenant you can select any of the site collection and you will get all the application customizer present in that particular site collection or web and you can uh, quickly update the property you can click on edit and update the property so for this demo what i have done is i have created an application customizer uh, so this is a footer so this is pre pnp demo now i'll just change it to pnp demo let's update and boom it is now updated let's refresh and let's see see uh, it got updated so uh, this becomes very handy and uh, this can be deployed in any of uh, uh, site pages and it can be used by any of the user who has access to all the site collection and the other uh, design is the list based design so if you change it to the list based design it would change the ui i can republish it i can view the properties okay and i can edit it as well so this is regarding the demo so let me quickly go to the code part so this is actually like a demo web part only so for this what we thought of to have two different ui frameworks so we are uh, using best of two worlds we are using material ui and we are using office ui fabric as well so if you see in the render method so let me quickly go to the render method uh, we have two different design types one is accordion and the list based so in the accordion we are using uh, material ui accordion and for the list based approach we are using uh, our list which is provided by office ui fabric and for fetching the data or for updating the data uh, we have created a service met, uh, service file you can see uh, this is fetching all the application customizer pre- present in the web so we are creating a web so we are using pnp js thank you for the pnp contributors who are contributing in pnp js as well so we are using web dot uh, user custom actions so this would fetch all the uh, customizers and to up so uh, this method is for fetching all the site collection which user has access to so using sp search which is handy sp dot search instead of uh, directly getting all the site collections and for updating we are using uh, we are first getting it by id and then we are updating it so this is how we are updating our uh, 
application customizer so while discussing or while having a pre demo session with siddharth uh, we thought of having a delete button as well which could be handy so in the next release or in the recent uh, future we'll update it with a delete button as well so that if you want to delete any application customizer you can quickly delete it as well uh, if you want to remove any of this uh, unwanted application customizer so this is it any questions if anyone has any so back to you patrick thank you all right well thank you very much for that demo the one thing maybe to mention on the yeah. there was a question from mike related on the user custom action or the, the extension modification collection administrator answer is actually no because at least by design the SPFX extension properties are stored in the web dot user custom action collection and that means that you have to be just an uh, is it actually a, even a member might be enough but you need to be a site owner not necessarily a site collection uh, administrator so technically by the way for Sitheart and and Kuhn uh, one option could be that that UX would give the opportunity of uh, setting the extension also in a site collection level because this is something what what we don't actually expect Expose to be super, uh, let's say, openly within the SPFX, but you could actually set the extension in a site object, and that would mean that if there will be a subsite created with a modern experiences in that site collection, it would natively have the extension available as well. So that actually does work, but it's not something which we super widely, or it's not maybe obvious when you're implementing an, an JPON framework extension that you can associate the extension either in a site collection level or in a site level something to know and we are a little bit ahead of schedule which is a thing i'm not used to having on this call so with that uh we do have a little bit of time for some open q a if folks have questions there in the chat i will uh say thank you for uh everybody joining the call today thank you very much to uh chong uh kunj and siddharth for the demos today and then as well uh, the recording for this call will be available in about 24 hours. So encourage you to check that out. Thank you, everybody who's watching this after the fact as well. Our next SPFX call is going to be December 17th. That is two Thursdays from now. Uh, same time, our next general dev call is next Thursday, December 10th, the same time. And our December monthly community call for SharePoint will be December 8th. And that's going to be all about branding. So that is next week. So uh, certainly check that out. And if you can't make any of the calls, of course, they will be available uh, after the fact on our YouTube channel. Uh, so developer community calls, we've got tons of great calls across all sorts of topic areas, adaptive cards, graph, Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, uh, these special interest group calls. Uh, encourage you to check out any or all of these uh, as you have interest. And uh, lots of great content from lots of great teams at Microsoft uh, in those calls and lots of great community content in all those calls. So really encourage you to uh, check those out and participate uh, in any of them where you might uh, want to. So uh, if you have demos, for example, for Graph, you can reach out to those folks uh, and I'm sure they would love to have you on their calls. So thank you everybody, awesome demos today, great call, great updates, and we do have a little bit of time so we can hang out for a few minutes if folks have questions. Good, um, I'm here for the handling of the questions. The, the Mahesh was asking, is there a way to remove applied site designs from a site collection? Answer is uh, unfortunately no. You can apply an alternative site design which will then uh, set, for example, an alternative uh, images and colors and all of that but uh, whenever we are applying a site design we do not remove anything because there would be otherwise a fear of deleting something so yes you can go and delete uh, any any folders or settings which you have provisioned using site design but there's no way for kind of a removing that by applying or removing deep de applying what does it unapply patrick help me you're an English speaking person. Unapply. R remove. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> English is so hard. <laughs> no, just kidding. Is there a process to <laughs> how to work with SPFX without internet access? Technically, there is. So, even in our tutorials, we actually show how to do 
development uh, locally when you would be using a local workbench. Now, when you're doing a development with local workbench, you cannot uh, access SharePoint APIs. And that means that you can't, you would have to either mock the data like we do in our tutorial series, or you would have to mimic the data otherwise. Uh, so it's not a, if you don't have an internet access, doing development with SPFX will be difficult. Also, when you're scaffolding your solution, the scaffolding, when we're creating the project, it kind of assumes that you have access on inter internet. Potentially, you could have a local proxy of NPM, given the packages which are needed for SPFX uh, solution, but it gets really, really, really complicated. So internet access is pretty much required whenever we're doing web stack development with NPM. Technically, if, if you are doing a large project and you have multiple developers and you have a budget and, and uh, let's say resources, you could do completely isolated from an internet development as well, but it gets complicated. Could, uh, how can we configure metadata search in SPO for instance, if I wanna search where risk equals high from Sandeep? That would be a managed property. So you would have to configure a, I think it's still a managed property, isn't it? Is there somebody who can confirm this? I don't know. I don't know. But it, it's basically, it, at least it used to be called a managed property. Uh, so we basically define a managed property so that the search understands what data property in the documents or in the list items is the one which is called risk. And therefore you can then target your search queries to that. Um, I can't really explain super detailed all of the steps in the in the chat or sorry in in this Q&A but you should be able to find more details if you search for search SharePoint search or enterprise search or Microsoft search and then managed property uh, you should be able to find guidance on that one from Microsoft. <laughs> Ralph has a basically need an antidote to undo a site. It, true, but site designs cannot delete anything. So there, there's no delete operations in site design. So it gets complicated for doing that. Unless you have code which you run with the site design, which is an Azure function, something like that. So, but it gets complicated. Uh, passing a dynamic data out of the box library and web part, like the list you and view template. I think you said it's not documented yet, but though it might be available at some point uh, from Mike. So this relates on how do we uh, bypass dynamic data from our custom web part to out of the box list web part. And I don't think it's yet even documented. Um, internally, I can, I can probably be pretty blunt and transparent on this one and don't get too much conf confused on this, but um, internally we always have kind of a challenge that is related on the platform and third party and partner requirements versus the first party requirements. And obviously the team which is responsible of the first party list the web parts, their primary objective is to, to provide the best possible first party uh, out of the box experience. And unfortunately then uh, getting stuff documented or getting the, the third party dimension there is I wouldn't say that it's a secondary objective, but it's still not the first thing what they always prioritize. And that means that then um, we, we haven't, for example, in this particular case, yet documented how could you bypass the information to the out of the box web part. And also it might be that we don't want to document that yet if we are still planning to change the data structure of the first part of the web part. That's really the challenge what we what we're having here. Um, our team, which is the platform team, we would love to do all of this stuff, but this challenges and internal priorities, which is always hard. And da, 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 how to control default SharePoint online list forms. We have developer client class web part to manage crude operations from Ruby. Um, unfortunately, uh, there is a user voice entry. Uh, thank you. Oh, let me actually find that. User voice entry related on SharePoint um, to be able to override out of the box list uh, views. Unfortunately, well, that user voice entry has already 2,500 entries and votes. And we need more, um, uh, but it's already in a decent level. But let's actually get even more stuff there. So right now you cannot override out of the box list experience with a custom web part. It's something which is absolutely in the pipeline. Um, it's it's unfortunately getting deprioritized on top of other things all the time, but the more votes we can actually get in on this one, I will paste in the link, uh, the more priority it will get. That's how things work in Microsoft, unfortunately. 
Good, good. What else? Uh, I store my less than JSON files in a local development. That's one way of doing that. Thank you, Carl, for sharing that. I can find this on CDN, but all other works. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's managed properly. Thank you, Carminder, for confirming that. Can we give an update on custom list forms? Yeah, that was the update on custom list forms. Thank you, Jeffrey, on asking that. And please, please uh, keep on pushing and pushing and asking and pushing and asking uh, updates on that one, because the more people you are asking that custom form capability, the more people are aware that there's a high demand for it. Um, it's been taking too long. I get that. Uh, we're fighting for it as well, but keep on pushing. Keep on pushing, please. Don't give up. Um, if we want to do an extension that mentions uh, someone in the text field, any hints to where to look from Ralph? The mention thing is is would be then, well, obviously you could use the Graph APIs to get the mentions, but there, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of implementations. Uh, also, let's, how would I put this? There's a there's lot to be implemented that in a really polished way, but you would hit basically the people search uh, from the Graph APIs, and there's no alternative ways of resolving the dimensions. So there's no native API which you could hit like we do in the out of the box capabilities. You could trace back what the out of the box capability does, but then it's not technically supported to hit that APIs in a third party, unfortunately. Uh, any update on the list to your threshold being the 5,000? Um, this is a classical discussion. Uh, so obviously, the list to your threshold only has an impact when you are seeing or loading more than 5,000 items at the one time. From my end user perspective, if you show 5,000 items, it makes no sense whatsoever. So you would be able to implement your functionality. Individual, one list can store 30 million items. So the list view rest threshold is about how many items do we actually show at the one time for the end users, or how many items do we load from the list? If we have 30 million items in the list, as long as we load less than 5,000 items at the one time, everything will work. So that's a super important thing to realize. Now, there is work being done because people still come back and say, I cannot use SharePoint list because there's a 5,000 item limit, which is not true. That is false. Um, but because of this perception, there is work being done internally in Microsoft to try to kind of figure out, okay, so what do we actually need to do here so that customers and partners don't keep on repeating that there's a 5,000 item limit because that is not correct. So, um, but it, it's, it's in the nuances and and I think it's in the backlog to finally get it resolved. Uh, the reason why there is a the the threshold, the threshold, the view threshold is there because from logical perspective, what would be the scenario where you need to present more than five thousand items in for the end user? And then that is there to limit uh, the performance impact of loading, for example, 30 million items at the one query, because that would obviously have a performance impact. George Timius is saying the top XXX is the problem. Is it not working? Ah, I don't know. But yeah, anyway, there, there's work being done on that one. So, and I think Patrick is about to close the call. Do you want to close the call? Do we still have questions? I think there's a couple more, but I think this is a good place to stop. I want to thank everybody for joining the call today. Thank you again to everybody for doing a demo. Thank you to Vesa for answering a ton of questions in a rapid fire Q&A mode. And uh, look forward to talking to all of you again soon. Have a great rest of your week. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.